So I made a Bridget video a few days ago, and honestly, one thing I should have said in that video is that, yeah, she probably is too overpowered right now, too overtuned, and what a lot of the pros have been saying is that she needs something a little bit worse about her, and I really should have mentioned that, that honestly was a big mistake by me. But one thing that I kind of started to think about after making that video and after hearing all these comments is, is it better to have a hero that is OP on release or useless on release? And after thinking about it for a little bit, I've decided, at least for myself, I would rather have a hero come out and be very strong than come out and be very weak. Now, again, this is my own opinion, so if you do have your own opinion, please <laughs> make sure to leave that down in the comment section down below. I'm sure there are very good reasons for the other side. I just want to talk about why, for me personally, I prefer when characters are released very strong compared to very weak in Overwatch, League of Legends, Dragon Ball Fighters, whatever game. This is just my own personal opinion though. And I would like to mention right here, I personally would prefer the most for every character to come out completely balanced in Overwatch. I think everybody would be asking for that, but that has never happened. So I'm going to be realistic, you know, usually they come out one side or the other and I'm going to be talking about, you know, the more overpowered side. But with that said, <laughs> let's get started here. So, to the first benefit, at least, that I see from releasing heroes that are very good is that it gives people that want to learn that hero a real reason to play them. And mainly, other than that, it gives the player base a good amount of time to get hardcore mains of that hero. Because, what I'm going to say here is that when a hero is released that's very bad, barely anyone's going to pick them up. And I think the most important part about adding a new hero into the game is getting a good player base, getting a decent amount of people that maybe don't want to main her or main him, but just want to pick them up and learn how they play. And if they're good, a lot of people are going to put in that time. A lot of people are going to start to main that hero. And I think you could essentially say that was an effective hero launch. While if they released very bad, like let's say Sombra or Doomfist, well, no one's really picking them up. Maybe for the first week they pick them up, but after that they figure out they're bad, they should just switch to somebody else in competitive, and those heroes are kind of forgotten about. And I think a really good example of this is looking at Sombra compared to Anna. Now, the second Anna was released, she was pretty weak, but she got a hotfix in like, you know, half a week. So, essentially Anna came out as a very strong-ish character, and then got really strong in the next meta, compared to Sombra who was weak for meta after meta. And when you look at these characters side by side, a lot of people started to pick up Anna. It was tank meta, she was really strong, people started to learn her, started to love her, and there we go. But with Sombra, not that many people picked her up. She didn't fit that well anywhere. And even though right now, currently, Sombra is much better than Anna by almost all statistics, we still have a lot more Anna players than Sombra players. And I think that alone can kind of talk about, I guess, the success of a character. Um, and that, you know, if you start out strong and give people a good base to learn a character on and a good base to get a feel for the character on, they're going to probably play them for longer. And as far as the game developer goes, I think that can, again, kind of be seen as a success. As well, I want to mention here that if your hero's released really underpowered, kind of like Doomfist, nobody will talk about them for a long time. And I know for myself, I tried to make Doomfist videos, but nobody cared. Uh, Doomfist had like a 1% play rate, or even less, like a 0.5% play rate for a long time. Nobody cared about him. Nobody wanted to see him. So a lot of people didn't really even think about him. A lot of people didn't pick him up. And again, when people are more strong, like Brigitte, or Bridget, sorry. Um, <laughs> if someone's strong, you will talk about them. You will learn about them. And I think overall, even if that can be kind of annoying because they're overpowered, at least it gives you something new to talk about. And again, at least it gets people talking about the character, picking them up. And again, as far as a game developer, I think that could be seen as a good thing to be happening. As I know, for a lot of the heroes being released in Overwatch, that doesn't really happen. Now, to another good point, at least for myself personally, I really like how new heroes that are very strong change the meta. And... Even if it's an annoying meta change, I still generally like it as long as it will be nerfed by the next season. Now, this doesn't really apply to Overwatch because Overwatch, the game developers, are very slow and whenever they rework or add a new hero, they take way too long to fix them. So, I mean, I think they should fix that. But generally, in most games, I like when they add this new hero or this new character, they change up the meta, everything's different, and then let's say around two to three months later, they nerf them, uh, they make them around mid tier, and then, you know, you can continue from there. I think it is fun though to have something new, and even if it isn't the most fun meta in the game, and even if it counters your current hero, it's nice to have something different, especially in a game like Overwatch where the same metas exist for so long, and where the game really isn't updated that fast, I think it's honestly nice to have a changed meta. Again though, for Overwatch in particular, I wish that they would not hotfix these characters, but at least change them at the beginning of every single season. I don't want another character rework like Mercy showing up anytime soon, and with Bridget, 
that might be what happens if she really is as strong as a lot of people are saying. Hope that doesn't happen, but in general, again, in my opinion, having a new meta is generally pretty fun, at least for me. Now, to my next thing that I'm going to say as a benefit is that if you look at all the new heroes coming out, it's much more likely that Blizzard is going to nerf the best heroes compared to buffing the worst heroes. They do, you know, buff and nerf very slowly either way, so I mean, that kind of sucks, at least in my opinion, but... I mean, when you look at it, if you add, let's say, an extremely overpowered character uh, like Bridget, let's say she is extremely overpowered, let's just use that as a situation, and then you compare that to adding somebody like Sombra, they're probably going to be nerfing Bridget faster because more people are complaining about that than buffing Sombra because, I mean, you just haven't learned how to play Sombra yet. Uh, that's the excuse everybody gives at the very beginning, even if that's not exactly the case, or you just haven't learned Doomfist yet. And maybe that is somewhat the case, I don't know, but in general, you can see that it just takes the team forever to buff these characters when they're not coming out very good. And if you're someone that wants to learn the character, but you know that they aren't very good at all, it's kind of hard for your, you know, yourself to decide to pick them up and play them. And overall, I'd rather have a character come in a little bit too strong and be nerfed, even if it only, you know, even if it still takes two months, uh, rather than have a character come in weak and be buffed after like eight months, because that's kind of how the development team has worked so far. Maybe in a perfect world, I'd rather have them, you know, come a little bit weaker and then slowly buff them up, um, but, you know, buff them like every single week, but that's not going to happen. So at least in the Overwatch world, uh, that's at least my my own thoughts about, um, you know, the strength of a hero and how Boston Nerf should work with them coming out and how it is beneficial to release them a little bit stronger, at least from the way Overwatch and the Overwatch team has been developing the game. Now to my next point. I really like how when you release a hero that's either overpowered or just good, I think I should mention that, <laughs> they don't have to be completely overpowered, maybe just good, that's this whole video, um, but whenever you release one of these characters, it makes everybody on your team know how to play with that character, and I honestly love that, because let's say again with Doomfist, when he was first released, nobody knows how to play with him, and even to this day, he's been out for a long time, nobody knows how to play with him at all, um, because there's just so little of them, and because... You know, it's kind of different. No one's really gotten used to that. While if you look again at, like, Bridget, I mean, people have been playing a ton of her in quick play. People are probably going to play a ton of her in competitive, and you're probably going to get used to playing with her very quickly. And what that does is that it means um, that, A, I mean, if you pick up that character, it'll be nice because people know how to play with you. Uh, but B, once that character, once the new character gets nerfed and goes from being a high tier to a mid or a low tier type character, like again with Anna, um people will still know how to play with them. Again, Anna's a good example. She was extremely overpowered, got nerfed, but even though she's not that great right now, people still kind of know how to play with you and she can still work okay. But again, with people like Sombra, there wasn't way too much of her, and people, even, even though Sombra's good, people still don't really know how to play with her at all. Overall, I think that's just a nice benefit of coming out strong. Everybody knows how to play with you, and I guess you know how to play with everybody else, which overall creates a really fun time for yourself. And another thing I should I should say here is that um, a lot of the player base will get used to combos and understand the win condition with your hero. Um, if we look at Bridget again, you know, her win condition is usually getting in there, uh, getting kills, pushing up the front line, getting that armor quickly, getting ultimates fast, all of those, getting picks. And maybe if she wasn't that strong, and not that many people wanted to pick her up, we wouldn't really know that. And in a lot of games, your teammates probably wouldn't be able to play around that because they wouldn't know what's going on. But now that they do kind of know what's going on, well, it's working out okay. And especially as far as combos go, with Sombra, I feel like a lot of people could combo a lot better with her ult if they were just more useful, uh, more used to her. Especially with Zarya ults, I mean, it's such an easy combo, but I see people just not doing it ever. Uh, and even with, you know, it could be a lot of different ults. Uh, but there are a lot of combos, and I think that honestly, having a hero that comes out very good, that's put straight into the meta, gives them a good chance to just be played for a long time, be comboed with for a long time, be played with for a long time, instead of just kind of being ignored, even when they finally become somewhat of a meta pick. And the final thing here I'm going to mention about this is that, personally, I really have a lot of fun on new heroes when they're a little bit overpowered or just a little bit too strong on release. They feel good, they make you want to play them, and they might go in and out of the meta, but at least they give you a good experience for the first little while. And again, it might be annoying for other people, and honestly, I do feel bad for you if your hero that you're playing gets kind of countered by this new meta pick. But I'd rather have that show up and have the opportunity to play this new hero rather than just never be able to play them because they completely suck. And I really do like the opportunity of trying out new characters when they are added to the game instead of just kind of ignoring them. But maybe that just is my own perfect, you know, ideas. Now, with this all said, again, I want to say, 
I would personally love a perfect meta where everyone had a 50% win rate. I would love if a character was released completely balanced, completely fair. That's what I would personally like the most, but that's probably never going to happen. So this is at least the two evils. This is the one I prefer. So do keep that in mind. I'm not just completely ignoring, you know, balanced characters coming out. It just hasn't really ever happened in Overwatch. So I don't know. I guess Arisa was uh, kind of balanced. I mean, probably a little bit underpowered, um, but still more balanced than everybody else but you know everybody forgets about arissa so you know that's a little weird but anyways as always guys though thank you all for watching hope you enjoyed if you did make sure to leave a like comment down below would you rather have an op hero or useless hero on release or where in between would you like that and don't say right in the middle because that's not gonna happen but i would like to hear you guys opinions anyways as always guys though thank you all for watching hope you enjoyed and as always have a wonderful day